Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we have another Oakley video and I know and oh, he's piping in already. I know we just did an Oakley video, but I wanted to do this one because oh, Oakley is six months now. So I thought I'd do kind of a hang on, a six month review almost. So it's kind of been more a direct follow up to bringing him home and the puppy haul. So yeah, I thought we'd just do a little bit of like an update. So I have my notes and I broke it down into sections. So I'm gonna talk about what he knows. So like all the tricks, all the training, that kind of stuff. Things that I hadn't bought, things that are worth the money to buy, how it's all going and what do I wish I'd known and what should you know before you get a puppy kind of thing. Cause I'm assuming that's why a lot of you are here. You're looking to buy a puppy or you've got a puppy or yeah. So I thought I'd just pop it that in the, at the end. I know how it's going should probably go at the beginning, but I'm not going to lie, I might get a little bit emotional with it. So that's near the end. So first up, I'm going to do what he knows. So I'm going to get him out. If you guys haven't seen him since the bringing him home vlog, he's a bit big. He's a bit bigger than that. So yeah, hang on a sec because I need to get him out and try and keep him chill. He is currently, just so you know where he is, he's currently right behind the camera in his crate with the blanket over it. So he's absolutely fine. He's just been out and playing in the snow because we have snow here at the minute. So he's probably going to be a little bit hyper, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll get him out now. Okay, come here then. Good boy. Good boy. You say hello. You say hello to the camera. Come in, come in. Come in. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. What a clever boy you are. Right. Oh, come here. I'm trying to pick you up, man. You like being picked up. Oh. Wow. Oh, wow. You're giving me a hug. Okay. <laughs> You're being difficult. Oh. <laughs> right. Is that where you wanted to go? Is that it? Hello. Yeah. So, this is Mr. Oakley now, if he will be nice enough to look at the camera. <laughs> okay, bed. Good boy. So, this is going to be where he is for a little while, because this is one thing that he can do. He can stay in bed. So, he doesn't leave unless he is asked to. He's not the best at it, but he's getting well, I say he's getting better. He was brilliant and he's had a little bit of regression. I mentioned this in, <laughs> thank you. I mentioned this in the last video that I did. But if you guys haven't seen that, he was doing really, really good with all of his training until about a month ago or just before Christmas, probably. He, no, get back in the bed. He went through a little bit of like a regression where he just acted as if he didn't know what he was doing he started pulling on his lead which he's never done before he started misbehaving he started crying more in his crate so he's not the best at this as what he used to be but he is okay like you will stay there until i tell him to it's just if we leave him there for ages and don't treat him then you like to come out don't you yeah so that is one thing, thank you, that he can do. Another thing that he can do that I probably can't demonstrate on here is weight. So if I go out, if he was just sitting on the floor, yeah, yeah, this is another thing that went bad again. He was really good at it and then it went bad. So if we are out in a field or if we're in the house, we can tell him just to wait and he will wait sometimes. He can also, he's getting better at walking on a lead than, he, since his regression because before his regression he was amazing but he's getting better so he can walk inside perfectly fine on lead it's when we go elsewhere that it goes a little bit not great so we have to use really high value treats to do that if we're out and about so i'll take some cheese and he has cheese when he's doing it rather than just having his food because if you don't know how I train, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, I hand feed Oakley all of his meals. He was on having half of his meal hand fed and half of his meal in his crate, but he's had a little bit of issues, like I said, with the regression, so we've gone back to all hand feeding. So he's getting hand fed all of his meals. So when we're out walking, I can't just give him his meals. He has to have, 
cheese if he's on the lead and apart like we take him out we don't really walk him we take him out in a field and just do some running about some enrichment stuff he's just allowed to sniff and everything i know you don't know who i'm talking to do you so we don't go on structured walks yet because he just can't deal with them and i don't want to have to be giving him so much cheese because i don't want him to be getting overweight so he can get he is getting better at walking on a lead and doing heel what else can you do where's my notes gone i'm sure i'm probably forgetting something but should we show them your tricks should we where's gonna be best am i gonna i'll sit out of shot can you come here yes good boy right down we'll just go through no yeah <laughs> yes good boy on your side no come on go on <laughs> is your bed getting in the way hang on right we'll try that again shall we come here right sit good boy down down yes on your side yeah <laughs> come on back down nope and then where are you gonna go yes i don't know if you guys can you can't see that at all let me try and see if he does that again come over here hey <laughs> hey poopy down come on nah -ah -ah. come on on your side yes good boy that's better you get it okay we'll go back to sit yes good boy pull yes good boy Need to swap hands for this one. High five. Yes, good boy. Hang on, okay. It fell on my leg. Um, let's see, what should we do next? Stand. Yes, good boy. Left. Where are you going? Come here. Left. Yes, good boy. Right. Yes, good boy. We shall do the last one, which is go through. Good boy. That's kind of all of these tricks. So, excuse me, can you go back? Oh, excuse me. Here. Sit. Wait. Oh, bed. Yes, good boy. Um, so, they're kind of these, all of these tricks. So, to recap, because obviously I had to do it quite quickly because he was here. We can do sit down on your side left which is spin to the left right which is spin to the right you can do pull high five go through my legs so yeah they're kind of the tricks you can do he can also oh i'll show you leave it actually he can also do leave it and that's with toys or with where's your rope gone let me get your rope or treats so if i throw some treats on the floor leave it yes good boy he won't go for them. If I present him with a treat but I haven't told him he's allowed it, he won't go for it. Ah. Oh, let that go. So you can see I can get it right up to his face. Okay, good boy. And he doesn't do it. Same with pulling toys. So if we play, I'll show you tug a little bit. Again, like I said in the last video, if you guys have watched that, he's not great with drop it anymore but we're getting there so i'll bring him around a little bit okay okay good boy <laughs> come on that's it good boy right come on get hold of it come on get a hold of it good boy ready bed oh you won you won right ready drop no yes good boy so if i say leave it when it's on the floor and moving about he doesn't go for it okay Good boy. And yeah. Right, I'll have that. Thank you. Drop. No. Hey. Yes, good boy. That's better. I'll leave him out and just let him mooch about a bit on his bed. Hey, pee pee. So, the next thing that I thought I would go through. Hi, what's this? Is things that I wish I hadn't bought. And I thought this was quite valuable. Excuse me. Are you showing me up? Get back on your bed. Good boy. It's things that I wish I hadn't bought because I thought this would be quite useful if you guys are looking to get a puppy and you might know what you think you shouldn't buy, you don't want to waste your money on. So the first thing that I would say I wish I hadn't bought is an extendable lead. It's a waste of money. The principles of learning to walk on a leash just doesn't, doesn't work with an extendable lead. The only thing that I would say that it's useful for is we don't have a garden so we have no you're gonna like excuse me 
down. Come on. Yes. We don't have a garden, so we have some space out back, which is our, it is a garden essentially, but it's on a super slope and it's kind of like a wild garden, so we can't spend time in it. And there's some land next to us. We use that to take him out. Obviously, we live in a flat, an upstairs flat, so we have to go down the stairs and do that. We used to use that for taking him out for his toilet breaks, but we think that that made him not understand that he can't pull on a lead and he doesn't have to walk by the side of us on a lead because we were using that extendable lead. So it was useful then, but I actually don't think that we should have done it like that. We should have had him on his leash and just walked him correctly until we got to the right place and then just let him free. Also, the other thing that it is quite good for is at the minute when we are going out back in the snow, we want him to be able to let off some steam just with us in the garden and on because we've got some parking spaces out back as well which obviously normally we don't let them run about on but when there's snow you can't really tell the difference between the garden and the parking spaces and us and our downstairs neighbors aren't actually using the parking spaces at the minute so we've been using that to just let him run about in the snow a bit so this morning jack had him on his extendable lead just so we could run about because the driveway isn't fenced off so obviously we wouldn't have him off lead at all just for safety but on the extendable lead it means you can run about a bit and it doesn't mean that he can't have as long as the long line because the long line is quite long so that's the only good thing about it in any other instance i'd much prefer to use the leash or the long line we use the leash for structured excuse me nope now good boy we use the leash for structured walks so when we go out to the field that we use to exercise him he is walking on his lead till he gets to the like into the field properly into the field kind of thing so he is on the lead then and then he gets put on his long line and he's allowed to run about and enjoy himself he's always on something we've never let him just off lead apart from when we have been at my grandparents because they have a big garden and they have two cocker spaniels so hey baby you're looking at me uh, he's been off lead then but i actually think no I actually think that when we are allowed to go back, I'll actually put him on his long line there as well so I can have a little bit more control over him. So I wouldn't extend, I didn't, I wouldn't recommend an, excuse me, sir. No. We would, I wouldn't ex recommend an extendable lead. Another thing that I regret, oh, thank you. You're not putting your foot on me though. Good boy. Another thing that I would not, can you lie down? You're not gonna get it if you're not being good. Another thing that I wouldn't recommend that I've got is a vet bed for his crate. I this it's a kind of it's it's double it, I don't know how to describe it. With this one, I think that that vet bed is going to come in really handy when he's a little bit older. But at the minute, it's not right for him. We, if you guys have watched the first videos you guys will have seen that we bought the large pets at home crate and it has never been used well. I tell a lie we used it for the first two weeks I think it was about two weeks and Oakley kept wetting in it because it was just too big keeping good boy it was just too big so we actually got a small crate from my grandparents and we used that so the vet bed didn't fit into it and then we've tried using it since and he humps it it's just it's not right for him at the minute it is too structured he digs it up he's wet on it a few times when he was tiny when we were using the large one so I am not going to say that I don't recommend the vet bed because if you have an older dog that's a little bit more calm it actually might be really good but for a puppy I just don't think it's great. We have either not used anything in his bed when he's been having issues with having like wheeze in his bed. He's never pooed in his bed apart from the first night. But when he's had issues with weeing in his bed we've had nothing in there and at the minute he's got a blanket in there. So I just don't think that that bed is great for puppies. This leads me nicely onto my third thing, and that's a massive crate. As I just said, we bought a large crate with from the advice of someone who pets at home, and it's completely far too big. I I fully believe that even when his foot oh you like relaxing, what a lovely boy. Oh, yeah, I knew you'd move as soon as I try to show you. Um. Even when he's fully grown, that large crate is going to be far too big. So we bought a medium, like we went back and bought another medium and it's going to be so much better. He fits so much better into it now and it's just, 
don't get a big crate. They wet in it because it's too big. And I actually think that he started acting better when we got him into a smaller crate. So don't get a big, big crate. If, even if you feel, if you have that guilt, guilt crate, crate guilt, don't, it, getting a bigger crate doesn't make it any better. Just get the crate that fits the dog at the time. And, and if you're gonna get a big one, and want them to grow into it, get a divider. Because we were gonna do that, but then we were able to get a small crate off my grandparents. But get a divider so he can know. I know baby, hi. Oh wow, lovely. How lovely. This will make sense as to why I'm enjoying this so much when I get onto the how, how it's going kind of thing. Right, get on, good boy, down. Good boy. Um. Yeah, so get a divider if it's too, if you're like thinking, I'm gonna get the size that he needs when he's when they are fully grown. Oh my god, Lex, thank you. Or just get a smaller crate. Another thing that was a waste of money for us personally, I don't know if this is the same for everybody else. Also, just really <laughs> you bet. Um, the, I, I just really quickly want to say all of this is very specific to him. So working cocker spaniel, there are some points um coming up on <laughs> Wow, hi baby. Come on, get back in your bed. There are some points coming up later that I actually don't think apply to other kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Breeds, other breeds, no. Other breeds of dogs. So if you disagree with some of these, it might just be because the breed's different or it just, dog personality. But yeah, this is, these are all specific to him. Next one is child locks for cupboards. And why I think this might not be the same for everyone is because he's never tried to get in a cupboard, but I know some dogs will try and like scratch into cupboards. I actually think that that is down to us creating them as well. Creating has been brilliant for us kind of, I'll get onto that in a bit, but we create him so he never gets the opportunity to try and get into cupboards and even, hi, um, even when we were letting him roam free in the kitchen at night, he never tried to get into the cupboards. So the child locks were a bit of a waste of money, but I'd rather got them and found out that he doesn't get into the cupboards. I'd rather it be the way that it happened with us than not having them and then he got into the cupboards and got into the cleaning products and stuff like that so yeah child locks were just the waste of money for us again another one that might not be the same for everyone but training pads we didn't we used them he didn't go on them and then once he got a little bit more confident he actually can you lie down good boy normally i have pockets and i don't have to reach for the treat so this is why i keep looking over there um oakley no, you're gonna go back in your crate if you can't stay in there. We, yeah, we had them down and then when he got a little bit more confident, he started ripping them up and they were just a waste of money. We think we've used, no. Maybe this was a bad idea to do this whilst you're out. Can you go in your crate? Right, this, this video might be a little bit more coherent now. I don't have to focus on him, he's back in his crate. Anyway, yeah, puppy pads, we they weren't very good for us. The next one is harnesses. I watched my puppy haul video back this morning. I actually forgot that we have two harnesses sitting unused in the drawer. So harnesses, they aren't useful or effective in getting them to learn how to walk on a lead. They need to be on their collar. So yeah, the harnesses, are a waste of money when they're a puppy. I would like eventually to be able to put him on a harness just because I think they're more forgiven. But when he's learning to lead, learn how to walk on a lead, they just don't work. So I wouldn't buy any harnesses until you know they can walk on a lead correctly. Okay, next section is things that are worth the money. So I have kind of, there, there are some obvious ones, but there are some maybe not as obvious ones, but I've only done four because there's been loads that's worth the money, but these are just four that I wanted to know. And the first one is his crate. The, I fully recommend creating them. We've not had any issues with biting. We've not had any potty training issues because he doesn't have the chance to do it because he's in his crate. I'm not gonna go into full depth here because I'm not a dog trainer. I can't fully talk about the benefits of creating, but I would just say that I, fully support the creating and the crate is worth the money 100% even though we bought two that probably wasn't worth the money we should have just bought the correct size but it, it they are worth the money 
Next one is Nyla Bone Shoes. I'll pop some pictures up of what they look like, but he loves his Nyla Bone Shoes. He has quite a few chew toys and the ones that he loves over all of them are the Nyla Bone ones. I think they're just a really nice material for his teeth. He goes through phases of different ones. He has some bone shaped ones. He has the typical blue one and he just goes through different stages of enjoying them all equally enjoying them all at different times but he always loves the Nyla Bone ones so I'd fully recommend the Nyla Bone ones. We've bought like I think he's only second pack of each of the types that we have now because he just goes through them so much so Nyla Bone chews really good. Next one is kind of one that I didn't think of we didn't buy him one until after we had him and that's coats. We have two now because we bought one and then my lovely friend Lauren she bought us one while well, she had one that we could have and they're worth it like not for keeping them dirty like dirt dirt free so not for getting them clean keeping them clean because they don't do that and then they get absolutely disgusting but it just keeps them a little bit warm and it makes you feel a little bit less guilty because when we get to places Oakley's often like will open the door and he starts shivering so he needs the coat on and they the reflective bits on them are actually really useful as well so coats are just something that I didn't think of before we got in but I would recommend having multiple because we have two and it's not enough uh, they're both in the wash at the minute and he doesn't have one so yeah multiple coats and the next one I feel like nobody's not gonna buy their dog a bed but I just wanted to mention his bed because it's brilliant we do bed training a lot well, not a lot, but we do a bed training quite a bit. I mean, you just saw it there. He was being really bad there, actually, and I'm not sure why, but he is in bed for a lot of stuff. Like, if we ever leave the room and we want him to stay in one place, he's on his bed. He loves his bed. We, at, from the very beginning, I did bed training. Like, literally from the first week, he was in, like, he got treats when he went on his bed and stuff. So, he loves his bed, and it's just so effective. Like, it's so useful. Don't think of your bed as just somewhere for them to chill. Like, it's a really good training tool as well. So, I would highly recommend having a bed. We actually, I'm thinking about buying another one because we keep swapping this one one between in the living room and in the kitchen because when he's in the kitchen and the crate's still in here he's got nowhere to go but he when we take that one in the kitchen he loves to just lie in it whilst we're cooking and stuff so yeah beds are very effective okay right i'm aware that this video is already super long so i'm going to try and make this as succinct as possible but i'm going to talk a little bit now about how it's going so there are a few problems that we are having with Oakley at the minute. If you guys watched the last video, I mentioned it in there and I'll mention it again now. So I'm sorry if this is repeated for you, but Oakley has gone through some issues with his crate. Um, not so much his crate, but separation anxiety. He actually really loves his crate. When we are in the room with him and the crate door is open, he will go and sit in his crate happily by himself. He rushes to his crate, he likes his crate, but he doesn't like being away from us and it's it's really really hard like really hard and we are the way that Oakley expresses his um, discomfort for being in his crate and you, you can hear him he's doing it now even when we're in the room he does this and I know some of you are probably thinking oh it's because you've got the blanket on and he can't see you we've tried both we've tried with no blanket at all we've tried with the blanket on but half up so you can see we're, we've tried with the blanket down we have had him in different rooms with us we had him in a different room with us for quite a while actually this happened in this regression that I keep talking about that it just so it just came about that he couldn't be in the kitchen by himself anymore and he just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and he was completely okay with it for so long. We've always put him in the kitchen, like always put him in the kitchen, even on his first day. If he fell asleep in here, we'd pick him up, put him in his crate in the kitchen, keep all the doors open so he could just come back to us when he wanted. And then we added in like the more structured nap times and they were in the kitchen. And then literally just before Christmas, he just, he just cried and cried and cried and cried when we were in the kitchen. So about two weeks ago, we decided we were just not gonna bother with the kitchen, apart from about like an hour a day and in overnight, like he's in there overnight, he's not in with us during the night. He's there um, when he goes to sleep at night time. And we put him in for an hour a day with 
a distraction. So with a Kong, not even an hour, we haven't even made an, an hour yet, like half an hour, with a Kong or a dental stick, that's the only thing he has, but we do that to try and get him back okay in the kitchen, but even when he's in here, he just cries and cries and cries. And when one of us moves, so me and Jack normally sit on our settee, which is there, and he's there. If one of us moves, so some, when I go at the mirror, which is there, he cries. When one of us leaves the room, he cries. You've heard him, he's crying now. And he, I'm sitting right next to him. I've had to put this on and attach it to his crate because we haven't been doing anything about it because I don't know what to do about it. And I am not trying to blow my own trumpet here, but I spend hours watching training videos, like, like hours. I am, I'm gonna hold my hands up and say that I was prepared for this, not the separation anxiety, but prepared for him because I spend forever watching training videos and I still don't know what to do. And nowhere talks about them crying in the crate past the first month because everyone says, just, you know, do things to make them love their crate. And he does love his crate. Like he, all the things that they say he should be able to do before he stops crying, he can do. He can, like he can do them. And it's just like, oh, it's crying constantly. It's so freaking hard, like so hard. It really hits you. And I don't like, I don't think the crate's the issue. I think it's like us, we are the issue. And I'm not saying that anything's his issue. It's not. I understand that the dog having behavioral issues is very much a reflection on the owner, which is what makes this so freaking hard that I don't know what we've done wrong. But the last day or so, I've started treating it like barking because everywhere says if they're crying, don't go to them and that's what we've been doing. But I've started treating it like barking, which a lot of people say don't let them just bark and bark and bark in the crate because it actually, what's the word? It's self-rewarding. So they'll bark because they like hearing themselves bark. So I've started treating it like barking and I've started like not hitting the crate, but like shaking the crate a little bit and not violently. Like, please don't think he's getting hurt in there. He's not like shaking the crate a little bit. And then I've put this on, which is his lead and it's clipped onto his crate. So if he's crying now, I'm going to shake it. So we try, I've been doing that for the last two days and it's actually helped. <laughs> so that's getting a little bit better, but the rest of it's just so hard. And I don't feel like I don't know if I'm the only one because I don't think I am but I think when you don't have a dog you look at people with dogs and puppies and you see all these memes about being like the dog's the best thing in your life it makes you feel so whole and it's so worth it and if you're having a crap time get a dog and then you get a dog well obviously a puppy and a dog is very different but you get a puppy and it's just so freaking hard. Like it's so hard. He just cries all the time. And then if he does something wrong, I think I, I, I specifically have an issue with this because I spend so long watching training videos. So I know that if the dog's having problems that it's a reflection on the owners. I just think I'm a shit owner. Like I just, I know I must be doing something wrong and it gets to me so bad. Like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it better than what it, what I'm already saying. Like it just, if he does something wrong, I, it hurts me <laughs> really bad. And there are other things that he keeps doing, and I mentioned it in the other one, but he keeps doing this thing where he doesn't like us touching him, and it's the weird. I've never hit him. I've never hit him. And sometimes it's as if like we'll go to because when he does zoomies or if he's biting on his house line i'll go to grab his collar which is what i've done from the beginning but then another dog trainer said don't do that so i stopped doing that but sometimes i have to grab his collar because he's just going fucking mental all over the place and when i grab his collar you will like pull back and then you'll like wrap his arms around my arm and because he has quite long claws at the minute if they like dig in i have like so many scars on my arm now because it, his claws have been in it and then sometimes he'll go under the puffy and i'll go to get him and he goes to bite at me and that just happened when i was trying to get him out before of the crate i was going to put his lead on him his house line and he would just go to bite me because he it is almost as if he doesn't want us to touch him and sometimes when we're out on the lead he will like if I'm trying to maneuver his body in closer to me, 
he'll like he'll like move away as if I don't if he doesn't want to touch me and I like I doesn't want me to touch him and I just don't know what I've done wrong like I really don't know and it's just oh it's so hard going and I don't think anybody shows this like everyone I follow on YouTube that's gotten a dog obviously they haven't done as much dog content as me but so that might have happened oh they don't talk about it but nobody talks about how hard this is like I think when you're trying to train them properly, and I'm saying that like a bit reserved because I don't want to come off as if I'm like, I'm doing it properly and other people aren't, but I am following the training like videos to a T and I'm not, I'm following McCann Dogs on TikTok. I follow Say It Once, like there's like four other people I follow and I follow all of that to a T. So I feel like when you're trying to train like that, it's so hard but I don't want to just give up on that like I don't just want to be like oh well fine he's being shit and he's great I'll not create him because then I know there'll be other issues like he could wet on the floor or he could bite all of the furniture but and it's just like I don't want to give up on the training because he needs to be trained I want him to be a well-behaved dog and I have seen people that have dogs that they haven't trained and they aren't well behaved and I want to be able to give him as more as much freedom as I can but I only feel comfortable doing that when I know he can do it and while he, when he is well behaved so I am trying to stick to the training so much and it's just so freaking hard because he just doesn't want to do it and I watch <laughs> videos all the time and I just feel like I'm repeating myself but it's just so hard like it's so hard and I don't know I think people just don't talk about how hard it is I've had a few comments on my other videos saying from other people saying I'm really struggling at the minute and it's so hard and I actually had someone comment saying that they have a dog at the minute and it makes them raising a child feel dead easy and you have no idea how much that meant like no idea how much that meant because having him has kind of put me off kids for a little while <laughs> I mean I wasn't wanting kids anyway but it's put me off kids for quite a while and it's just this is hard and it's not hard in a way of hard as training as in the entire day is hard because when he's in there he's crying that's hard you, like and when you're training him and he isn't doing what you want like what you want him to do it's hard and then i'm going to talk about some more in a little bit in the next section but you feel guilty about stuff and it's it's just so hard and that is how it's going i'm struggling I wouldn't dream of ever giving Oakley up and I don't regret getting him but there are times where I'm like should we have gotten a dog I have had so many days where I'm just crying because of him and it's not his fault I don't blame him but it's so hard getting so frustrated and wound up by it all and then for him still to be crying so yeah I just wanted to be upfront about it and tell you how I'm feeling. I'm sure I'm probably gonna get some hate for it saying you shouldn't own a dog, but you know what? I'm trying and I'm not giving up. I'm doing the best I can. I, I, I believe I am because I'm watching, I just never stop reading about training. But yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you how it really, really is going. It's not going great. That is why when he was there and letting me pet him, I was like, oh because he never lets me pet him he's just too crazy like you can't pet him because he just goes mental so yeah that was quite nice so we'll move on the next section is what do I wish I'd known or what should you know before you get a puppy and the first one leads in from all that and it's not it, <laughs> that it's not all cuddles when they're a puppy kind of thing and again I think this goes off different breeds and obviously he's a cocker spaniel so he has a lot of energy and I can tell you now I have probably only ever had a cuddle off him two or three times and he's six months like we've had him for four months and he just you can't cuddle him because he's just crazy you get scratched you get bit he wants to play he doesn't know where he wants to be he'll act as if he wants to be up here you get him up here and then he wants to be down we've I haven't cuddled them but I've seen other people who have like labs or more chill dogs and they can have cuddles but with a cocker spaniel you can't cuddle them you want to love them but they don't want to be loved unless in a specific way and then they get there and then they don't actually want to be there so yeah it's not all cuddles at the beginning you can't you can barely get a cuddle I feel like I can't wait till he becomes a grown dog so I actually can cuddle him and stroke him without him just being berserk so 
yeah. Next one is just listen to the training videos. I did the mistake at the beginning of thinking, oh, well, people have said to keep the crate door shut, but I'm not going to. I don't feel right about it. And then I think it resulted in more problems. So I would say watch the training videos, listen to the training videos and do what they say to a T. Next one is, this is something that I actually think I've done all right. So I, this is more something that I want you guys to know and that is socialization isn't what you think. So I had so many people when we first got Oakley saying, take them to the dog park, like not dog park, we don't really have dog parks, but like take them to meet other dogs, make them go in with other dogs. The older dogs will teach them a lesson. No, I am not having my dog bit by another dog for him to learn how to behave. And when you watch all the training videos, they all say socialization isn't just throwing your dog in with a dog and letting them fend for themselves. It's just having them around things. And that's what we're doing. So he hasn't, he's only ever played with two other dogs and that's my grandparents' dogs. He hasn't played with Jack's family's dogs. He hasn't played with random dogs, apart from when the dogs come bounding up to him and I can't do anything about it. It's, it's a touchy spot. He doesn't play with them. He just, he does his training around other dogs and around places that he hasn't been before. So have a look into socialization and please don't just throw your dog in with a load of older dogs to fend for themselves. The second last one is how much energy they actually have. I used to think that I would be completely fine with a Cocker Spaniel because I go on loads of walks and I'll just take them on loads of walks and it'll be fine. No, there are so many different points to this. One, when they're a puppy, you can't take them on a walk because they don't know how to go on a walk. Two, walking isn't enough. Like, we don't walk them at the minute, and I'm okay with that because I know that walking isn't enough for normal dogs anyway, so we do the other things. So, I used to think that I'd take them out on a walk once or twice a day and it would be fine. They have that energy the entire day, like it's not just building up for that walk. So we have to take him out nearly, take him out of his crate nearly every hour to play tug or to do some like brain stimulation or take him out to the field that we go to and let him run about and that's still not enough. They are way more energetic than you think. And the final one is that parent guilt isn't just for babies. And I feel like that's gonna be controversial because I know I don't have a baby and I know having a puppy is very different from having a baby but the amount of guilt I feel <laughs> for that puppy is crazy. So it's anything, like it's anything. I feel guilty that he's in his crate right now. I feel guilty that we crate him, even though I know crating is the right way to go. I feel guilty that when we take him out that I have to take him away. I worry when we're in bed, I'm like, oh my God, is he okay? Like it's all the time. And I can only compare this to what people say when they have kids and uh, yeah, it's just, there's nothing you can do to stop it. I think he could be the most well-behaved dog in the world and I'd still feel guilt that he's sitting in our house when dogs are bred to be out running all the time. Like, that's the kind of things that come into my brain because I just can't, I can't stop thinking about it. So, yeah, that that's my last one. I hope you, <laughs> this wasn't a put off for you guys and I hope you don't think that I was just sitting complaining I'm not I just want to tell you guys how it is because I am struggling like I, it, I I'm struggling and I want you guys to know so that if you have a puppy and you are struggling babe you're not the only one because that's one thing that I'm struggling at the minute is like how how does everyone just seem okay when I'm really not okay so yeah I just wanted to guys let you know what it's really like I wanted to just reflect on some of the stuff from the beginning about what we shouldn't have bought unless just in case it helped one of you guys so yeah I'm sorry this video was so long like oh my god I feel like I've, I've talked for like 50 minutes straight so yeah thank you so much for watching if you guys have any questions please just let me know I am more than happy to answer any questions about him about training about any of it so yeah just please let me know and I'll answer them in another video or just comment back or yeah all that kind of stuff again thank you for watching please make sure to give it a like if you didn't enjoy it or to just let me know that i'm not being a bad dog mom or comment and let me know what you guys think and subscribe if you are new i shall stop talking and i shall see you in the next video chickpeas thank you again for watching bye